You know her, of course, as the former CEO of Xerox. She's on multiple boards. She is a senior advisor at Taneo. She is shaking up the world of private equity, and she's also just released her own memoir. Where you are is not who you are. It is, of course, Ursula Burns. The book you have written, it stirs something. The story, you are like the encapsulation of an American dream, really, coming from poverty, describing what that felt like, what that smelt like, what it looked like, and then to reach the highest eclions of of power within business. Are the recipes there for more people to follow in your footsteps in America at the moment? I think that the recipes are there. Um, I don't believe that we're mixing with the right levels yet, but at least we have the ingredients present. And the only reason why I'm a little bit more cautious than I would have normally been is because the pandemic has taken its toll. And I think has taken years off of progress. So taken years away from the progress that we've made, but it also ignited some um, accelerants as well, which is good. So maybe we are slowed down a little bit, maybe not as fast. Maybe we have to get more people that have been left behind moving forward. But I think that the ingredients are there. We have to focus on the level and the mix of the ingredients. And we have to focus on uh, just keeping uh, continuous feedback loops, you know, just think, you know, learn, do, and then act again. So you act, you learn, you do, you do it again, yeah. and so on, so on. That is really an important set of things. But I am, I am convinced that we have the start of something that's, that's going to be talk, exciting for the world's future. Talk to us about your feedback loop. I mean, your memoir goes into really what helped catapult you, the story of your mother, how, what a force she was in driving you forward, wanting you to get outside of your neighborhood into a better place you write it as, but also some of the impediments that you saw that, I mean, teach us the fact that one school, one university you wanted to go to said, look, you've got to swim a lap of a pool. And well, that's not something that inner city kids did. Are we starting to break out of those hidden uh, frictions that stop people of color or people from lower incomes being able to climb in the way that they should? Yes, we are not fast enough. Some of this stuff is hidden. Some of it is um, purposely obscure. Uh, but, you know, the social media, technology, word of mouth, whatever it is, is making it less and less possible for you to be um, deceitful. If, if you get my drift, not that these places were necessarily deceitful, but non-transparent. So I do believe that there is progress here. But Something as simple as when I was going to college, this, this rec requirement that you swim a lap before I even spoke to anyone, I looked at the school and said, well, I'm not going to go. I'm not even going to apply there. I don't swim. Didn't think it was important that I learned how to swim, but also reflected that it was maybe my fault that <laughs> I didn't swim. So I think all of that has to be eliminated for like freedom um, of grasping opportunities to be to be fully enacted, little things like that seem like they're small. People are like, oh, don't worry about it, but think about what you are up against when you are coming out of an environment that doesn't have a lot of examples, that you don't have money, et cetera, and you read quickly, oh, and by the way, you have to be able to swim a lap, and you're like, oh my God, that's just another, that's the, that's the needle that broke the back of the camel, and I think it's really, really, really important that we actually keep looking for these minor things and eliminating them. Um, the one yeah. reason why I bring it up is for that reason. These minor things are minor to you and me now, but they are not minor to people who are pulling themselves up every single day. What about those minor things within the corporate world? You're a woman who's trying to look at board diversity in particular and, and how that can be brought to bear. And if you can't see it, you can't be an element. But how are you finding that as, as companies, the role of capitalism in ensuring we iron out these minor things to not become huge? Yeah, um, businesses, I think this is a place, particularly public public and publicly traded companies, where we're having a crescendo of different activities coming together into something that's not noise, but music, right? So there is um, a push everywhere for opening up boardrooms and the C-suite to diversity. That diversity is largely focused on white women right now. They are um, making progress faster than any other group. By the way, I say hooray. But I also say, be, a, be careful here, right? Um, white is one of the, women is one of the problems. White is the other problem. So if you fix the white woman problem, you have not fixed 
the diversity problem because black mm -hmm. and black female, brown females are still excluded. That's harder because that's in the heart and soul of people and in the minds in back in the back of their minds from a diver, from a, a bias perspective. Right, race is a very distinct problem to gender. We haven't gotten there if all we do is make a whole bunch of white women CEOs and a whole bunch of white women board members. So that's number one. Number two, it we 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 know public companies as well. We know we can find out facts and data about them. You can look in the annual report. Hopefully they have pictures. You can count the number of people. So consumers, community leaders, government, anybody can find out information about them. And we should be able to do that, which we're trying to do. They should make it easier. That's one of the things we call for. We shouldn't have to look at every book. They should tell us how many, what their diversity looks like. But we can at least find it out. The bigger issue and a rising issue is the wealth that's created, the power that's created, the new companies that are created, generally tech companies, in the PE and VC world that we have very little data on. There is no tracking, there is no counting, there is no measuring. They are essentially private. And this is something that we're spending a lot of time focusing on because if you think about that, they launch into Facebook and Apple and Amazon, et cetera. And if they launch incorrectly and Uber, they launch incorrectly, guess what? We have to fix it down before we can actually start to make pro progress it's really important that we understand what's happening there as well. You're a global woman. You're a woman who has been living in London. You're now coming back to America with signs of optimism. I'm interested in, as you run a global business and we're speaking at an, a global forum here, Middle East, Asia, Europe, the US, are there areas where are getting it right from your perspective? I think the UK, the Europe, Europe is making significant progress and in many ways leading leading the conversation here. I know that the Americans don't want to hear that, but in ESG in general and in board diversity from a, from a gender perspective, they've said, listen, we're going to enact rules. We're going to actually tell you what we want to hear. We're going to tell you how many people we think should be there. They, they have made it um, unavoidable to, to kind of comply, you know, without some negative action. So I think that there are places in, outside of the United States that are absolutely leading the way and are setting an example for, for the US and other parts of the world to actually engage. I do believe that there are other places that they're falling well behind. People of color in these countries, um, in Europe in particular, is one that's kind of silent. Again, this is the people of color and specifically women of color. They, I understand the complexities of accounting, but that can't be an excuse. You can't say we can't mm -hmm. count, therefore, so that's an area I won't go too deeply into that. And then gender around the world. Um, I know it's tied up with a lot of um, tradition and religion and et cetera, but half the world, everywhere you go in the world is women and having them actionably excuse, um, excluded from participating in the, broadly in the economy is not a very good thing. And there, there's work that has to be done there. I don't believe all the approaches can be done like the US or even like um, Western Europe, but we have to, have to, have to, every country has to look at being more inclusive and set their targets uh, and goals, et cetera, uh, to their population and to the world. Ursula, I've had the great fortune in getting to know you, but reading your book told me so much more about you, where you came from, what drives you. But what my, many might not know is of course that you left the US because you almost, despaired of where the country, the direction it was going, that was hard for you away from your family, particularly in a time of COVID, you've now come back. What does that say about you? What does it say about America right now? Yeah, so I left exasperated and demoralized. I gotta say, I must say, it wasn't about only the president that we had elected and his vitriol. It was the fact that we elected him as a nation and what at what state we must have been in. And I, I left kind of in a huff. I moved to the UK. I, I had lived there before. I love the UK. Um, they have their own problems. This is not an ideal place. Don't get me. It's nothing like that. I, I needed, myself and my husband needed to exhale from the election. So we left immediately after the election in 2017, January of 2017. We got here February, got there February. What I saw over the next four years was, oh my God, I'm so happy I left. I was relatively fragile. And then my husband died in 2019. I needed a place where my brain could rest. Fortunately, 
the country kind of came around and were more inclusive in their messaging. And we have a new president, new administration, but a new voice, a new hope. And so I am, I'm still gonna be in London a lot of time, but I am back here in the United States, in New York, a lot more than I ha have ever been in the last five years. And I'm happy, I'm happy that that's an opportunity for me going forward. I feel a little guilty leaving because it was almost like leaving a burning ship but I was very active, as you guys know, I probably know I was very active um, in Europe, in the UK um, and in Amsterdam, where I lived back here in the United States. But it's nothing like being here and feeling a citizen, like a citizen again. Ursula, very selfishly, as I'm based in New York, I'm really happy to have you back here, too. Thank you. I want to thank you so much for your time and really always enjoy the messages that you share. Come do it again. Thank you. Caroline, you are phenomenal. Thank you.